Hi everybody, I'm Mike Gonzalez here at 12 News. Thanks so much for logging on to my Facebook and YouTube pages. You know, I wanna give you a little bit of inspiration today. I want you to meet a guy named Craig Helmers. Uh, he just beat pancreatic cancer. A year ago, he was literally given a death sentence. They told him you have two months to live. But when I ran into him over at Honor Research Institute in Scottsdale, he told me, you know what? I want you to follow my story because in a year from now, I'm gonna walk out of here uh, beating this pancreatic cancer. You know, I kind of had my doubts, but you know, watching his strength, uh, how he survived and overcome has just been incredible. So I hope you enjoy his story and get a whole lot of inspiration from it. So good. I met Phoenix native Craig Helmers in March of this year at Honor Health Research Institute in Scottsdale. I was shooting the incredibly inspirational story of Sandra DeMay Forrest, a woman who against all odds was beating pancreatic cancer. When she approached Craig and his wife Trisha, it didn't take long to notice something was different about him. His funny hat, positive attitude and big smile elevated my curiosity. So I started asking questions and wondering how a man who had gone through so many near-death experiences over the past year could remain so positive and still have a zest for life. Helmer says he made the decision not to die and live life to the fullest while he's still here. And people like Sandra give him the hope to survive a prognosis that often gives people only months to live. We well, were all wrong. We're in the right place. Honor right Health place. and TGen have saved our lives. Absolutely. Definitely saved our lives. And we're going to be lives. there together with my cold hands and all. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> how, we are. How inspiring has Sandra been for you to know that, she, you know, four years later after her prognosis of two months that, you know, she's still kicking and she's still going strong. I mean, how important is that for you to see it's, that? It's super important. I mean, I, we were talking about um, what my next career, I used to be a commercial pilot, still am, but I'm retired. And meeting people like Sandra and people that haven't given up because there's just your number when you come into this world in pancreatic cancer. And when you meet people that are not numbers, we're not a statistic, and we're doing fine, mm -hmm. you realize that there is hope. And in a lot of places, I don't think have that anywhere besides these small centers that maybe people don't know about. And uh, so meeting people like you that walk and talk and are healthy and yes. maybe still living with cancer, but who cares about that? Right. You can live with a lot of things. After meeting Craig and his wife, Tricia, we decided to chronicle Craig's journey from this point forward. But to know where he is now, you have to start from where this love affair began. Almost six years ago, we yeah. met and uh, we were living in Utah. And um, I, uh, I have a friend that had a condo in Park City and, and Tricia and her friends had a birthday. and. My friend said, go over there and hang out with these girls because I'm not going to be in town. He ended up coming with me and a bunch of girls. They said, our friend said, uh, don't any of you guys like him? He's a player. And I'm like, don't worry. I'm barely getting divorced. I won't. <laughs> I'm like, no way. I was a single guy at the time. And they were like, you know, don't, don't date Craig. He's not, you know, he's a player, you know. But, but I went over there and, and maybe I was a player. I don't know. But anyways but it didn't take long for him to become smitten with the birthday girl. Yeah, and so I went over and I immediately was attracted to Trisha. I was like, who's this girl? You know, and uh, she owned a salon, which was about an hour away from where I was in Park City. And she said, you can't date me, and if you want to come get your hair cut, you can. And so I told him he could come get his hair cut at my salon. You know, I wouldn't give him my phone number. So when he came. And I did. I drove an hour. I said, I'm driving an hour. And, yeah, I did. I did. And so then we started dating and we did a long distance hour back and forth for a long time. And then finally it was like she moved in. And For the handsome commercial pilot and the beautiful successful salon owner, life seemed perfect. In 2017, the pair moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Craig had become a part of Trisha's family, even inspiring her daughter to become a pilot. But in June of 2018, everything would change. Craig was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and the prognosis was grim. Maybe a couple times during the previous couple months, I'd had a stomachache, but nothing, nothing major. I was a pilot. I, we exercised all the time. I was in good shape. I was, you know, my body weight was great. My health was great. 
as far as I could tell. It was devastating and yeah, I'm a very compassionate person and so it was like, yeah, they said it was curable. It's going to be curable, so we got to keep going. Craig had cancer in his ampular vader near the pancreas and gallbladder, and it required something called a Whipple surgery. Whipple is a huge surgery. It involves cutting out parts of your, well, basically your gallbladder goes, parts of your pancreas, parts of your stomach, parts of your small intestine. Big surgery, but that was the option I got. Craig needed to gain weight before the surgery, so he ate and worked out because doctors told him if he did survive, he was going to lose a lot of muscle and a lot of weight. Craig did survive that Whipple surgery, but doctors would make what Craig believes was a vital mistake. Shortly after the surgery, they discharged him from the hospital. And I went home and within about 24 hours, I was being hauled back to the hospital because they called 911 because I was non-responsive and um, I went sep septus in my, my lungs and my lungs got ruined. I, I basically aspirated and basically ruined my healthy lungs, died, was re 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 revived in the hospital and then I was in, uh, I was in a coma for a drug-induced coma for almost two months solid in, in the ICU. On life support, I really didn't know if he'd make it or not, because the doctors didn't think he would make it. And so, and I, I told him all the time, I go, you are the most positive person of anybody um, to make it through this. And sure enough, he did. And I told him, you might never be able to fly airplanes again, but you could be a motivational speaker. Craig would spend the next four months in the hospital undergoing several surgeries and fighting for his life. I started breathing again and then they took the trach out eventually and then they, I had to go through rehab to learn how to walk again because I was about, a, we're guessing about 105 pounds when I got done with this because I was being force fed or you know right. fed through tubes. What did you normally weigh? 167 when I went in there. We got them here together. But never once did Trisha leave Craig's side. In September, the couple got married in Fort Lauderdale, inside Craig's hospital room. You take this room to be your wife, to live together in holy matrimony, to love her, to honor her, to comfort her, and to keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others for as long as you both shall live. I do. Trisha, you take this man to be your husband, to live together in holy matrimony, to love him, to honor him, to comfort him, and to keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, for as long as you shall live. I do. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may be In October of 2018, Craig was well enough to go home, but his future was uncertain. That's when a good friend he grew up with in Phoenix told him about Honor Health Research Institute in Scottsdale and the groundbreaking work they're doing with pancreatic cancer. You come out here, we came out here somewhere before Christmas, they took blood, they looked at all my records from the, the hospital, they took a lot, a lot of CAT scan, they did a CAT scan, PET, did we do a PET scan? I don't remember, but we did a CAT CT for sure and they look at everything and mainly blood work they want to make sure my you know my levels in my blood work were acceptable because they don't want to start you if you're so sick that right. it's not going to continue on yeah so there was some hope there yeah Craig is doing very well he in many ways is a miracle Gail Jamison is a nurse practitioner and clinical investigator when she met Craig she wasn't sure he'd make it as he mentioned when he first came to us on paper he looked much too ill to be in a clinical trial. However, when we saw him and we saw his inspiration and his dedication wanting to beat this disease, uh, he, he convinced us based on what we call performance status that he was exercising, he was getting stronger, he was recovering from all of his events in the intensive care unit after surgery. And so we really did determine that he was eligible and fit enough to be on a clinical trial with us. Wow, so, and he's made incredible progress, so it sounds like um, the cancer that was in there is 75% less than it was when he started. 
he's had a dramatic response. He is on a four drug combination. This is what we call a phase 1B. We took the standard drugs that were approved, nabpaclitaxel and gemcitabine for pancreatic cancer treatment. We added a third drug, cisplatin, and that three drug combination we did test in 25 patients. And in that study, what we saw, patients with newly diagnosed pancreatic cancer that had spread outside of that area, we call it metastatic, that we saw two patients have a complete response out of 25. That's unheard of in stage four pancreatic cancer. We saw 71% of those patients have a dramatic response to the treatment. We've seen several long-term survivors. Fast forward to today, and Craig is a walking miracle. What was supposed to be six months has turned into more than a year. That is actually uh, a vitamin C. So that is vitamin C and, and uh, the saline solution, so it's a mix. Um. Despite the progress, the days are grueling. Craig undergoes chemotherapy treatments two weeks in a row, followed by a week of high vitamin C doses. Then on the fourth week, it's back to chemo treatments again. But Craig says you'll never hear him complain. I'm the guy that's gaining weight on chemo, so I, I came in here at 132 pounds and now I'm about 151. And um, that's kind of unusual. So I say I'm feeling a lot better. For Craig and Tricia, they don't know what the future will hold. It's why they cherish the here and now so much. And no matter what happens, they will always be together as Craig continues this fight. He always tells me, I'm not a number. I'm not a statistic, Trisha. I'm not that. So don't look at the odds. I tell my doctors, Gail, all the time that I'm going to wait around and I'll be around because they, you know, just keep me alive and there will be that, there will be that Make magic that pill. That <laughs>
it was born out of so much research over the last uh, decade, really. So the initial co base combination was a combination of these three chemotherapy drugs, uh, gemcitabine, napaclitaxel, and cisplatinum. Those three drugs have a response rate in stage four pancreas cancer of 71%. What that means is the, the ability of these drugs in stage four pancreas cancer to shrink the tumors significantly. The next step for Craig is preparing for his old life in Fort Lauderdale, Florida again. He'll be put on a maintenance plan as far as drugs go and see a new doctor there. But he'll still have to make a trip to Scottsdale every two months to make sure the pancreatic cancer hasn't come back. Go back to Florida and maybe sit at home for a little while and just kind of decompress, go to the beach do some busy work, you know, yeah. get the house back in order, you know, it's just, just a normal everyday living, which would be great. And then, I mean, we're still, we really want to advocate. I, we don't know exactly how we're going to do this yet, but whether that's travel across the country and tell people to yeah. never give up, never quit, don't, and give them knowledge about, you know, you know, places like Honor Research Institute, because if I didn't know about it, I might not be here. Yeah. Come over and give you hugs. Hey. Yeah, I'm gonna give you hugs for, and not just for the camera, but my right. hugs. <laughs> Good to see you. The hardest part of leaving Honor Health Institute is saying goodbye to nurses, doctors, and staff who've become close friends. I mean, I do. I think there's a little, uh, there's always a little anxiety or anxiousness when you're changing, right. you know, because this became like a university or a school or, or something, you're always there. You were here, I was here for nine months, it was like a new job. And uh, and then you leave, and not only do you miss the people, that's one of them, but the aspects, but I think that you, there is a sense of security here because they took such good care of us, and they do. Nurses like Danielle Legrand have made all the difference. Danielle, you know, when you get to this stage, you know, how does it make you feel? I mean, because you've been through quite a process with these guys. Yeah, well, we were talking about that a little bit. And, you know, as the nurse, you know, we see these patients go through thick and thin, right? right. So, and, yeah. and we are there every step of the way and we feel it. We walk those paths with them. No matter what the future holds for Craig and Tricia, it will be a road filled with love, positive thoughts, and a new perspective on life from a man who refused to let pancreatic cancer ever take him away. You know, it's, it's, it's obviously very, very um, uh, rewarding to see someone do well and, and, to, and to do well with a very tough cancer. And, and I think that, that, that's important too because that allows the opportunity then to uh, to continue doing what, what you're doing, but also share that 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 what we what you're seeing, and so uh, someone like Craig being an advocate is tremendous because the doctor can can talk about the statistics and, and what they've seen, but seeing someone like Craig and seeing how they they're doing and, and speaking on what his experience is is a tremendous uh, thing for an individual with pancreatic cancer. I think it just, I walked in saying it's not gonna kill me. This is not going to kill me. And I tell people, I, I saw people come into this clinic, were scared to death, and I'd say, you gotta change it up here. You gotta start looking at, I'm not gonna die from this. I'm going to fight. And you wanna fight, and everybody wants to fight. And the fight is, uh, you know, it's not 100% curable for everybody, but 50% of it's up here, so start putting that part into it. and. Right you're gonna give yourself a lot better odds.